Biff Straker, Space Ways. Boys and girls, fans of action, your attention please. Introducing a new transcribed feature available through radiographic sound and downloadable through your favorite podjector. Biff Straker, the spaceman of the stars, the crusader of the cosmos, hero of the heavens, and star of Earth's Spaceways begins in a moment. But first, our winner of the Spaceways 31st Century Boy Contest, the premier Nova Cadet, Colm Guthrie Ward, who is now known as Kid Rocket, has something to say. Let's try to connect with him now. Kid, Kid Rocket, this is Earth, the 21st Century calling. Can you hear us? I can hear you. This is Kid Rocket. He thanks so much for a swell introduction. That's why this is Kid Rocket talking to you from Nova Command. And so keen to be here at the center of all action for a star alliance. Well, I wish I could show it to you all. Now, Kid, we don't want to give too much away. I'm sorry, Mr. Narrator. It's so cool being here. I guess I got a bit of carried away. That's all right, Kid Rocket. Now, why don't you tell all the listeners out there how they can get to become Nova Cadets? Well, we're just organizing it now. With Commander Angela Deegan, Josh, and put why I bet... Kid, can we at least have anyone interested in being a Nova Cadet contact you? Yes, so. If they just say no name, age, and email address to Nova Cadet at gmail.com. We'll sign them up. You become Nova Cadet. Why well, even Biff Straker became a Kid, Nova Cadet? you know Biff Straker? Do I know him? He's amazing. Why, he's just the bravest captain in Nova Command. He saved us single-handed at least seven times. Why don't we just show them ourselves, kid? That'd be a swell idea. All right, till next time, this is Force Cadet Kid Rocket signing out. Aim for the stars. That was Kid Rocket from the 31st century, more than a thousand years into the future. But our story doesn't begin in the future. Instead, it begins in the past, in the year 1993, where Stephen Biff Straker, football athlete and scholar at Gulf University, has met with the amazing science professor, Dr. Leo Vester, late at night in a secret location. Mr. Straker. Doc? Over here. What are you doing over by these hedges? Give me a hand with this grate. Certainly, Doc. How many times have I told you, Mr. Straker, my name is Dr. Vester, or Professor Vester, but certainly not Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it's much harder with just one. A ladder? Yes, indeed, Mr. Straker. Come quickly now. Science waits for no man. Yes, sir. It is black as pitch down here, Doc. Professor! There are torches built into the walls for illumination. Torches? A little old tech, isn't it, Doc? A d doctor? Where are we going? To investigate sewer alligators? Nothing quite so mythological, I assure you, Mr. Straker. Come, we have just a few more feet to go. Exactly 111 feet from the street. 100 feet straight down below the campus, Biff and Professor Vester continue their descent with only the burning, weak illumination of a torch held cautiously by the Doctor of Physics as they make their way along the metal ladder until... There. That has it. What now, Doctor? It's like standing at the bottom of a well. One second, Mr. Straker. Vester. Leo. Voice print password. My little buttercup has the cutest smile. What? I had the security upgrade in the last ten years. Impressive, Doctor. Where are we? Initially, this underground chamber was developed in the 60s as an experimental bomb shelter. Should the university require it, all the faculty and a portion of the best and brightest could have been housed down here during a nuclear exchange. How big is it? The actual facility covers nearly one-third of the entire campus. 
Originally, there were a great many subterranean chambers and underground sewers that were remodeled and upgraded with lead shielding. Are we the only ones who... After the fall of the Soviet Union, most of the access points were walled off to prevent curious students from running a muck. The project was shut down. Most? All but the entrance in the gardens from the street level, and only I have the keys and the access codes for that. You'd be surprised in a university how many rooms or buildings remain mysteriously untouched because of one or another administrative order more than a decade previous. Why do I maintain access to this place? The answer is quite obvious, Mr. Straker. There is nowhere else that I would be able to perform my experiments. And my experiments are my last chance for my legacy to mankind. Legacy? What? Doctor, what, what is this? This, Mr. Straker, is the future! It looks like one of those single-arm turbines. You've seen them used to train astronauts and, and test pilots as to the effects of G-force? No, but I have seen every James Bond movie ever made. Yes. Well, be that as it may, this is where you come in, Mr. Straker. This is amazing. How are you able to use all this power without the university knowing? Wait, wait a minute. What do you mean where I come in? Self-contained geothermal reactor, cobbled together from some master students on loan from MIT, Harvard, and Toronto University as a high-level science fair project I was able to create a grant for. The project submitted belonged to the university, more specifically, the judging committee, and it was little problem for me to... What does this have to do with me? You did apply to intern in the physics department. Well, yes, that's true, but... And your marks hardly qualify you for one of the various labs we operate. That's why I applied, sir. My pappy used to say that if you want to get better at something, immerse yourself in it. And you are, well, rather athletic. No major injuries, illnesses, genetic defaults, no history of diabetes, mental illness, or heart problems in your family. How, how do you... Have no doubt, Mr. Straker. I am very thorough when it comes to my experiments. I plan everything to the last detail. Well, I won't let you down, Professor. Mr. Straker, of that I was certain. While you are equipped with the required physicality for my experimentation, you lack the deep act human to procure financial remuneration from any of my academic colleagues. Uh, yeah. In short, Mr. Straker, you can't possibly understand the processes involved, so that even if you did tell, there's little you can pass on to any competitors. You can trust me, Doctor. I wouldn't tell. Of course, Biff. Sometimes I forget what it's like to be in your twenties and still believe in something. What is our test, Professor? The future, Biff! You said that before. Einstein's theory of relativity tells us that the closer we accelerate towards the speed of light, the more relative time slows down. Yes, sir. Powered by our geothermal reactor, I've been developing specialized batteries to store enormous reservoirs of energy, all focused upon our turbine there. Such power that anyone sitting in the cockpit seat there at the end of the arm will have the ride of his life reaching speeds no human has ever gone before, as near to the speed of light as we dare. You want me to go there? You, sir, will be our first chrononaut. Time, traveler. For you, time will not have changed a great deal, but for the world around you, the pace of time will race to catch up with the spinning of the arm. Doctor, are you sure that- Nothing to fear, Mr. Straker. I will be right here, monitoring the controls. At the first sign of trouble, I have a series of fail-safes that will slow the temporal turbine to a manageable state and stop. But at such speed. Another important innovation, inertial controllers. You see, the cockpit is completely enclosed for a reason. It needs to be hermetically sealed. The motion of the arm is nearly frictionless, which means a passenger might travel for all eternity if necessary. If necessary. In the locker down to the right, you'll find the chrono suit. Chrono suit? 
Yes. It's in the third locker on the right. Uh, Dr. Vester. Yes, Mr. Straker. Is this it? Yes, Mr. Straker. Slide the suit over your regular clothes. All right. Although you might want to loosen your pants first a little. It can pinch a bit about the waist. This looks like a space suit. Chrono suit, Mr. Straker. It is for traveling through time. Although it does have some interesting features. Helmet. Yes. You'll need to put that on. It's vacuum sealed, but don't worry. The hose is reinforced polymer and hooked into the frame, so there's no tensile stress upon it. The entire arm operates on an electron-level glide apparatus, aiding to the frictionless components. Boots are heavy. They are counterweighted and designed to clamp into the time turbine, just as your glove wristlets will fasten as well. After all, if your limbs somehow came free... Yes? It's best not to think about such things. Oh, something bit me. Uh, that's just the oh. nutrient enabler. The new what's it? Uh, once you zipped the suit in place, it expanded the interior pressure, and the needle pack on the inside back of the neck of the chrono suit operates as a life monitor and provides your body with both oxygenated blood and nutrients. Are you saying I don't need to breathe or eat? Or drink water, actually. You can breathe the same CO2 in your helmet till doomsday, and your body will feel like it's still receiving all it needs. Although, I expect you will feel a slight euphoria from the sedative. Sedative? Uh, n necessary, so that your heartbeat remains within safety parameters. Don't worry, it's mild at best. <clears throat> Come with me to the cockpit. Doctor? Yes, Biff? Am I going to die? I'm fairly certain that's not going to happen. Now, watch your head. Uh, get into the chrono chair. Okay? Give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up! Oh, hold on. There, I've turned on your helmet radio. Uh, can you hear me, Mr. Straker? Yes, Doc. Doctor. I'm so pleased. I had forgotten that the cockpit is rendered mostly soundproof. What now? Do you see the boot and gauntlet fasteners? Gauntlet? Gloves. And... Uh, hook and snap your boots in place first. They should work much like downhill skis fasten. Toe first and then heel. I see them, Doctor. That's got it. Excellent. Now just place your hands face down one at a time on the armrests. Excellent. The clamps should properly mollify any movement of your arms. What do I do now, Doctor? Mr. Straker, sit back and let me drive. Drive? Metaphorically speaking, of course. You will not be really going anywhere but round and round as the turbine picks up speed. Then why? As the turbine picks up speed, time dilation will occur. The graphite polymer mix on the track and moving parts will remove friction until enough speed occurs and the gravitics takes place. Gravitics? At precisely 7,452 kilometers per hour, the time turbine moves into full flight mode and begins angling the centrifugal force in such a way that literally no moving parts touch. The chrono chair will be held aloft by pure centrigravitic force. That's incredible. Indeed. The arm will spin and spin and spin until it reaches nearly the speed of light itself. But nothing can exceed the speed of light. We're not attempting to pierce that barrier, Mr. Straker. We have no need. No. Einstein's time dilation is our goal. We're going to edge you ahead of local time. Ahead of local time? But how much further ahead? For you, Mr. Straker, mere minutes will pass. For me and the rest of your Earth-bound brethren, however, a full two weeks will have lapsed. Two weeks? But I'll... I'll starve to death. Mr. Straker, you're thinking of time linearly. While it will be fourteen days here, in the lab, for you it will be mere minutes. 6.4 minutes, to be exact. Professor, are you all right? This is the culmination of my life's work, Mr. Straker. I feel as giddy as a schoolboy. <laughs> you needn't worry at any rate about food. 
your nutrition is carefully supplemented and monitored, not just for blood oxygenation, but rather to make certain you uh, gain enough vitamins, minerals, uh, even water. Is it dangerous? It's never been tested before, so I'm going to say no. Never been tested before? Science waits for no man, Mr. Straker. And time, time waits for no one either. Doc? See you in the future. Pressure. Conversation is impossible now, Mr. Straker. I'm simply speaking too quickly for you to hear. It's working. He's moving so fast. He's not even a blur. Reaching phase one. Moving to central graffiti mode. This can't be possible. My chest can't breathe. I can't. Great Scott Leslie, as the pressure builds upon our hero, Biff Streaker passes out as the time turbine relentlessly whirls him faster and faster into the future. While poor Dr. Vester, overexcited that his great lifelong dream has come to pass, collapses on the floor. Will the doctor recover his senses in time? Will Biff survive this chronal crisis? Stand by for Spaceways, starring Biff Straker, and Episode 2, The Haunted World. Episode 1, The Future Is Now, stars Eric Benson as Dr. Leo Vester, Colm Guthrie Ward as Kid Rocket, and Jack Ward is Biff Straker. Spaceways, Year Zero, was directed and written by Jack J. Ward. Audio editing production by Josiah Ambrose. Music composed and performed by Sharon B. The Biff Straker March is composed by Sharon B. from an original theme by Jack Ward and is an EVP production from Halifax, Canada. I'm your announcer, Mark Brzee. Return with us next time for Biff Straker and the Haunted World. Good night. Biff Straker, Spaceways. Boys and girls, fans of action. Your attention, please. Introducing a new transcribed feature available through radiographic sound and downloadable through your favorite podjector. Biff Straker, the spaceman of the stars, the crusader of the cosmos, hero of the heavens, and star of Earth's Spaceways begins in a moment. But first, our winner of the Spaceways 31st Century Boy Contest, the premier Nova Cadet, Colm Guthrie Ward, who is now known as Kid Rocket, has something to say. Let's try to connect with him now. Kid, Kid Rocket, 
This is Earth, the 21st century calling. Can you hear us? I can hear you. This is Kid Rocket. He thanks so much for a swell introduction. That's why this is Kid Rocket talking to you from Nova Command. And so keen to be here at the center of all action for a star alliance. Oh, I wish I could show it to you all. Now, Kid, we don't want to give too much away. I'm sorry, Mr. Narrator. It's so cool being here. I guess I got a bit of Kelly away. That's all right, Kid Rocket. Now, why don't you tell all the listeners out there how they can get to become Nova Cadets? Well, we're just organizing it now. With Commander Angela Deegan, Dosh, and put why I bet... Kid, can we at least have anyone interested in being a Nova Cadet contact you? Yes, so. If they just say no name, age, and email address to novacadet at gmail.com. We'll sign them up. You become Nova Cadet. Why even Biff Striker became a Kid, Nova Cadet? You know Biff Striker? Do I know him? He's amazing. Why he's just the bravest captain in Nova Command. He saved us single-handed at least seven times. Why don't we just show them ourselves, kid? That'd be a swell idea. All right. Till next time. This is Force Cadet Kid Rocket signing out. Aim for the stars. That was Kid Rocket from the 31st century, more than a thousand years into the future. But our story doesn't begin in the future. Instead, it begins in the past, in the year 1993. The university, how many rooms or buildings remain mysteriously untouched because of one or another administrative order more than a decade previous. Why do I maintain access to this place? The answer is quite obvious, Mr. Straker. There is nowhere else that I would be able to perform my experiments. And my experiments are my last chance for my legacy to mankind. Legacy? What? Doctor, what, what is this? This, Mr. Straker, is the future. It looks like one of those single-arm turbines. You've seen them used to train astronauts and, and test pilots as to the effects of G-force? No, but I have seen every James Bond movie ever made. Yes. Well, be that as it may, this is where you come in, Mr. Straker. This is amazing. How are you able to use all this power without the university knowing? Wait, wait a minute. What do you mean where I come in? Self-contained geothermal reactor, cobbled together from some master students on loan from MIT, Harvard, and Toronto University as a high-level science fair project I was able to create a grant for. The project submitted belonged to the university, more specifically physics, as they make their way along the metal ladder until... There. That has it. What now, Doctor? It's like standing at the bottom of a well. One second, Mr. Straker. Vester, Leo, voice print password. My little buttercup has the cutest smile. What? I had the security upgraded in the last 10 years. Impressive, Doctor. Where are we? Initially, this underground chamber was developed in the 60s as an experimental bomb shelter. Should the university require it, all the faculty and a portion of the best and brightest could have been housed down here during a nuclear exchange. How big is it? The actual facility covers nearly one third of the entire campus. Originally, there were a great many subterranean chambers and underground sewers that were remodeled and upgraded with lead shielding. Are we the only ones who... After the fall of the Soviet Union, most of the access points were walled off to prevent curious students from running a muck. The project was shut down. Most? All but the entrance in the gardens from the street level and only I have the keys and the access codes for that. You'd be surprised in it. Where Stephen Biff Straker, football athlete and scholar at Gulf University, has met with the amazing science professor, Dr. Leo Vester, late at night in a secret location. Mr. Straker. Doc? 
Over here. What are you doing over by these hedges? Give me a hand with this grate. Certainly, Doc. How many times have I told you, Mr. Straker, my name is Dr. Vester, or Professor Vester, but certainly not Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it's much harder with just one. A ladder? Yes, indeed, Mr. Straker. Come quickly now. Science waits for no man. Yes, sir. It's as black as pitch down here, Doc. Professor! There are torches built into the walls for illumination. Torches? A little old tech, isn't it, Doc? A d doctor? Where are we going? To investigate sewer alligators? Nothing quite so mythological, I assure you, Mr. Straker. Come, we have just a few more feet to go. Exactly 111 feet from the street. 100 feet straight down below the campus, if and Professor Vester continue their descent, with only the burning, weak illumination of a torch held cautiously by the doctor 